So as you can see, we're going to talk about loading and unloading students with special needs. And I think we'll try something a little different. Instead of having a lot of extra discussion, we might be able to, oh, you need to be over there. <laughs> Mr. Clark made the announcement, sorry. <laughs> so instead of having like a big discussion, we'll try to keep everything short. If you have a question, write it on your sheet and we can answer it at the end because we still have another um, wheelchair thing to do after this. So we'll try to get through it quick. So today we're going to be talking about understanding the special ed process, loading and unloading, loading a wheelchair and unloading a wheelchair, and communication between us, parents, students. <clears throat> There's emergency exits at the back, at the front here, behind the curtain. <coughs> Obviously no smoking. Make sure your cell phones are silenced and try not to carry on side conversations because I know when someone's behind me mumbling, it makes me think of what they're saying and not pay, paying attention. So by the end of the training, we'll be able to list three strategies when loading students with special needs. We'll list two strategies when unloading students with special needs. We'll be able to identify at least four disabilities covered under IDEA and we'll know three important facts about transporting students in a wheelchair. So our goal today is to provide safe, reliable student transportation to ensure every student arrives to school ready to learn and returns home safely. <clears throat> we will accomplish, accomplish this by working together as a team, sharing information and learning from one another. So in this next video, it's dated August 24th, 2015. The, the boy that we will see, his name is Eddie. It's his first day of school. Not first day of school ever, but his first day that he gets to walk onto the school bus. So just watch the video and um, we'll talk about it a little after. Okay. And I guess the bus is here. Here comes Eddie's 275 bus. Rolling in. Okay. I'm ready to go, man? Yeah. All right, huh? You got the video. I got it. Let's go. You got the video? Yeah. Is that what you want? Yeah. All right. Okay, ready? Yeah. Can I talk? Can I talk to Mr. Ken, please? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, here we go. <laughs> this is your 275 bus, right? Yeah. Can I say good morning to everyone, please? Sure, I'm gonna have to shut this phone off, Eddie, so I can, because I can't. He can go up the stairs. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are what you? What is your name? My name is Miss Joyce. You are Miss Joyce? Yes. <laughs> and the bus driver is Mr. Ken. Yeah. Okay. You are Miss Joyce? Yes. Yeah. Can I talk to you? Oh, <laughs> sure. You can talk to me. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Need help, sir? Yeah. He's okay. Good morning. He's excited. He's excited. All right, dude. We got one seat left, Eddie. Right? 
That's the same seat from last year. Alright. Same bus, same seat. Hi, dude. Hi, good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Hi. Okay, bud. Get in your seat. Okay, I'm going to shut this off, all right? You have a good first day of school, bud. All right. So think about all the planning and the preparation that goes into that not just with the school district and, and getting everything approved that he could do it himself, but also the father getting him ready. Um, notice the attendant's positive attitude. She's starting his day off greeting him and spending extra time with him. Um, the warm greeting from the driver. The father communicating with the, the aide that he can do it himself. All of this um, is to assist him. Um, and then the greetings from the other students. Does anyone have a, a quick comment? I thought his enthusiasm was contagious. He's so sweet. I would watch the whole video throughout the whole day just to see him interact with people. And... Go through a day? Yeah. Maybe they'll do that down the road for us. Maybe you can sing karaoke. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so understanding the special education process, this is more of the school um, and different laws that were put into place. Um, many, many meetings happened before school started so that Eddie got the proper services he needed. Um, we're going to talk about IDEA, the committee process, and then 13 different categories of disabilities. So in 1975, the federal government created um, IDEA, Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. Um, they created individual education programs. Uh, least restrictive environment, extended school year, which is like summer school for students so they don't lose what they gained all year. And um, all students have the right to be transported and educated with their non-disabled peers. This comes under IDEA. And it supports the students with a disability. Uh, most drivers and monitors have students on their bus and don't even know that they're special needs. So the committee process is, there's a committee on special education, which is made up of, um, sorry, this isn't big enough, this podium, um, teachers, transportation, um, aides, parents, and special ed department. Um, it reflects the educational behaviors and goals for the year, that would be their IEP. So it, it could change yearly, but it's a goal that they're working towards. And we must provide all of these services as a transportation-related service. So they have to get, be able to have uh, um, fair transportation to school like every other student. These are the different characteristics or categories under the diagnosis. Autism, deaf and blindness, deafness, emotional disturbance, hearing impaired, intellectually impaired and then multiple disabilities. Autism is a wide range of symptoms, skills, impacts, behavior, um, social skills, speech, repetitive behavior, different strength or weaknesses. Under deaf and blind, it could be hearing and visual. Um, emotional disturbance, anxiety, schizophrenia, bipolar, OCD, and with intellectual disability, it could be a lower IQ, poor communication, poor self-care, poor social skills, maybe Down syndrome. Orthopedic would be neuromotor, degenerative, and musco, musco, <laughs> sorry, musco-skeletal. Um, other impairments, it's an umbrella term. The second one down is an umbrella term. Um, it could have to do with strength, energy, alertness, for example, ADHD. Specific learning disability, they might have trouble reading, writing, listening, speaking, reasoning, or doing math. So their IEP, you could have a student that's just not good in math, their IEP would state that and they would just have extra time to take a test. So it, it's a wide range of variety, a big scale that 
this to go on. Um, speech would be stutter, stuttering like I am. Articulation, language impairment, voice impairment. Um, and then traumatic brain injury could have been from a car accident or physical force. So they have a traumatic brain injury. And visual impairment, including blindness, could be partial sight, which cannot be corrected with eyewear or other medical device. Does anyone have questions yet? I know we're going through it quick, but um, if you want to ask a question, feel free or just save it for after. Next, we'll be talking about loading. We'll focus on safe loading procedures, safe crossing procedures, boarding strategies, seating strategies, and staff attributes. So these are the same procedures that we're using in the bus with all of the students waiting 15 feet back from the road. <clears throat> students should wait in a single line as the bus approaches. Some students must wait for, the, for assistance. So the aide or the monitor on the bus would have to get off and help them cross the road or get on the bus and then going to their seat and sit down using the handrail. So we all know the universal crossing signal. This may take a little more effort because they learn at a different pace than another student would. Some need to be walked across the road. Um, make sure the student understands the procedure, even if it means you're doing it every single day, repeating it and repeating it and repeating it because that's what they might need. Um, if you have any questions we, with a student that isn't crossing correctly, you can always come to me or Bill or even Jen Hall at the school for extra help um, because it's about safety and it's about getting these kids to school safely and getting them across the road is the moment of truth. So we all know this, it's in all of our buses. Check before you step. I see the driver, the driver sees me. Wait for the driver's signal. Look left, right, left. Um, use a backpack. That's to keep kids from dropping things and going under the bus to pick them up. And that the horn means danger. Go back. So safe crossing procedures. If I start to lose my voice, I apologize. I will try to take a sip. Um, I'll just read this slide and we'll go along. If a, if a child must cross the street to board the bus, they must wait for the attendant or monitor to cross with them. Both the attendant, monitor, and student must wait for the driver's signal and follow all safe crossing procedures. Attendant monitor reboards the bus last, so after the student. Uh, bus staff should always refer to district or company policy when crossing students with special needs, and we're required by law to follow the specific accommodation on the student's IEP. Do you have a question? We are, and I know in the past, like, it, it's been hush-hush, but we have new administration. If we have a concern, we can go to Bill, and Bill can call Jen Hall. I think it would be good if we could be involved more in the committee. I know years ago, you and I sat in on a, um, on a meeting. I just got hired to be on a student, or be on a bus with a student that had seizures and I was a nervous wreck. I wanted to be at that meeting so I knew what to expect. Um, I haven't seen that in years, but I think that this administration is more than willing to keep us in the loop. Um, that's something that we can talk to Jen Hall about, um, being in meetings with the parents, with the teachers, with the aides, so that we know what's going on. And we do have the right to talk to the parents when we get to the stop, call them at the house, we can talk to the raids as they come to the bus and ask them how their day was or I'm um, having an issue with this, how is it going in school? So um, parents don't have to give us the information, but I would imagine most parents that have special needs students want you to know as much as possible. So I already read that. Um, boarding strategies. Does a student need assistance before boarding? That's something we're gonna know before we even get to the stop the first day. And I know we all make phone calls to the parents. That's when we can ask the parent, does your student need help getting on the bus? It should be provided to us by Jen Hall, if that was the case. 
As far as getting on the bus, some students are a little nervous. If you saw Eddie, he took a little bit longer to get in. Um, if they're nervous about the stairs themselves, they, they mention that you can turn your body towards the handrail and go up that way so you're not wide open. You're just focusing on the handrail and not the stairs. Um, the attendant or monitor can get, give physical guidance. So if the attendant needs to stand behind them and put their hand on their shoulder or maybe a hand on their back to help them so they don't feel like they're going to fall backwards, that's helpful. With impulsive darters, use hands-on supervision. I was a little um, nervous about talking about that because we were always told not to touch the students. But if you have a student that's going to dart and run away, putting your hand on them is a little more safer than having them run out into traffic, especially like with Judy. I think she's gone. Um, she's down in Albany. I don't know what part of Albany, but if they're running out in traffic, it's safer for us to keep a hand on them to, than to have them running and getting hurt. <clears throat> and then allow a comfort carry item. That could be a stuffed animal or something that you could lure them on the bus with or lure them off the bus if they're not willing to get on or off. Using a name or a picture above their seat. So if, they're, if they can't read, by putting a picture up there, they'll know where their seat is. It reduces anxiety. Um, some students must sit alone, but some students don't want to sit alone, so you just need to know the student. Most of us are on the same buses, so we are aware of what our students like. If a student's sensitive to light or sound, you're going to need to make sure they're not near a window, they're not near a heater, they're not near the wheelchair lift with the noise. We need to be flexible. We need to be able to adjust to change. and. Um, consistency is more important, but flexibility. Consistency is important, but flexibility is more important. We know with special needs. Um, do we have any monitors in here? Amanda? All right. Do you guys notice that sometimes with kids, being flexible is more important than um, being consistent? Maybe they're having a bad day and you realize that they don't want to do exactly what you're saying. By being a little more flexible that day, it's better for you and for the student. Mm -hmm. well, when I was a uh, monitor on the job, sometimes I, I have to be, you know, be quiet, be without, or sometimes I have to want to talk, to want to sing, and I was just, oh my God, you know, I was, if she was feeling bad, and the time was both. So your know, flexibility so. is better than being consistent. Some students, like I have a student on my boss, that likes consistency. He wants to know when I'm not driving. He wants to know if there's going to be a sub on. He wants to know everything, and he remembers it for a month. And so, he wants to know the other yes. And why. Yep. And where they are and why they're in that school. That they want to know these things. Where mm -hmm. you, you you have to just know your own student. Um, paying attention to detail when securing a child. So making sure that you're not being distracted if you're either hooking a seatbelt hooking the wheelchair. Um, some students come with other devices that you need to secure down. So you don't want to be dis distracted, basically. You want to make sure that they're getting in their seat and secured correctly. Being patient, that's for everyone. And that's not special needs kids, it's everyone. Being patient with our coworkers, being patient with the kids, being patient with the parents. Um, and then showing that you sincerely care about the students you transport. I have no doubt in here that anyone doesn't care about the kids on their bus because we stay on the same buses and we work with the kids, so it shows. So for unloading, we're going to talk about approaching the stop, safe unloading procedures, and different unloading strategies. So right here they want you to know that we're just refreshing your memory. These are things you all know, but it's always good. We get new people in. like. Joanne, she's new to us today, she came in, and this is all new to her, even though we've been through it a few times. So before you arrive to the stop, you want to make sure that the students are ready. Tell them we're almost at your stop, put all your stuff in your backpack, get everything together. Um, remain seated until the bus is stopped. We, as drivers, would make sure our amber lights are activated. Before we get to the stop, obviously that should have been before, is the master switch should be on. 
and don't come flying into your stop and don't take off from your stop quick. That's a rule for everyone. It's for everyone's safety. As you're coming in, you want to come in slow because you don't know what the kids are doing. Um, when you leave the stop, you want to leave the stop slow because you could have someone chasing the bus or danger outside. Um, when I do defensive driving reviews, that's a big one for me is to watch the speed as everyone's coming in because loading and unloading is the moment of truth. That's when students are most at risk. So just come in nice and slow, leave nice and slow. See the picture? Anyone? <laughs> I, I couldn't really blow it up anymore, but that's our buddy bird. I wanted to add him into our video or into our presentation, and I did check with April um, to see if it was okay if we put it in. I didn't want get to her, get her upset. But as you're coming in or, or unloading, you want the monitor to scan for hazards. Um, make sure everyone knows they have to check before they step. And does everyone know what that means, check before you step? What's that? So on the bottom step. So like for Joanne, she's seen our, our crossing poster in the bus, but at basically when you get to the bottom step before you step off the bus, you're gonna have the student look both ways to make sure no cars are coming up the side of the bus. So check before you step. Monitor and attendant usually disembark first, so they would get off first and then help the student off. By state law, we must instruct every cro crossing child every day about the safe crossing procedures. That's in our laws and regs book. And I have to say, I am so proud of Joanne. I gave her this that she came back like the next day and read the whole thing. So she gets like the gold star, at least in my book. Um, but it does say in here, and this is, this is something that we really need to be familiar with. It should have handwriting. It should have all kinds of marks in it because this is basically what we should and shouldn't be doing. But here, oh, that's for the post trip. It says, the driver of a school bus when discharging pupils who must cross the highway shall instruct such pupils to cross the highway at a distance of 10 feet in front of the vehicle so as to be in the vision of the driver. The driver shall also keep such school bus halted with red signals flashing until, stu until pupils have reached the opposite side of the highway. Um, courts have held that failure to instruct children can give rise to absolute liability for the bus driver. So I'm not taking that liability, I'm just gonna train my kids every single day. And all crossers must make eye contact with the driver. So I see you, you see me. The driver should see their feet where, the, uh, where they touch the ground. You wanna give simple, clear instructions because these students might have a learning disability or might be deaf and can't hear you. You would have to work around that. Um, repetition and consistency. Oops. Be prepared to repeat, repeat directions several times if needed. Physical prompts, um, dragging your heels on the step, that's to keep them aware of what they're doing as they're going down the steps. And then verbally cueing what they need to do as a monitor or as a driver. And then, like we saw with Eddie, have patience because he's a little bit slower than the other kids. That's where you would want either the student to load first or last so that they're not in the middle holding everyone up. As far as, as far as child checks go, we all know how important this is. We've seen stories on the news over the years of students being left on the bus, whether they're special needs or not. So it is our liability. Drivers and monitors have an attendance shall check the vehicle to ensure that no child is left behind on board unattended at the conclusion of the school bus route. So that means if there's five adults on the bus, five adults walk to the back, not the driver, not just the monitor, every single adult on the bus goes to the back. If you don't and someone's left on board, you're all in trouble. So don't take that liability. Everyone has to go. So we're gonna talk about things you need to know, lift operation and wheelchair securement. We will do a little bit when we go out on the buses. We have three wheelchair buses here and three wheelchairs. 
Um, this, we need to know obviously the child's name, what their medical needs are. And when I was in the nurse's office picking up the wheelchairs, she did mention to me, she's gonna be sending me an email, oops, um, an email because when we gave the EpiPen training, we all got that training and then we got a piece of paper that said what student has what allergy. She got a little nervous when I was in there and she wants everyone to know that those names are very confidential. So in the, in the future when she sends us information, she wants me to keep it in my office and I'll call each person in and tell them and that's where it stays unless it's a sub or a monitor on your bus. So if there's a monitor and a driver, I'll call them both in, I'll talk to them and make sure that they sign the slip of paper stating that they're gonna be um, confidential about it. And then when they leave my office, they don't talk to anyone else about it. They obviously can talk to Bill or me or, or um, the nurse, but you don't wanna be caught out in public talking about a student's allergies, even though it seems like nothing to us. So just keep that in mind. Um, the style of chair that they have, these chairs that we have are just plain hospital chairs. Jen, you've hooked a million wheel wheelchairs. You know some have- Mr. Miller, please report to Mrs. Donovan's office. Ms. Britt, please report to Mrs. Donovan's the office. Welded, the little Mr. Welded, Miller and Ms. Britt. Um, what else have you seen? Yeah, basically on these wheelchairs, you have to find the main part of the frame for spots on the main part of the frame to hook them on. Um, special secure, securement equipment. So some students might have oxygen tanks. They have to be secured so they're not a projectile. Um, then special equipment on the wheelchair. Keep in mind that some students have arm positioning devices. They might have a lap tray. They might have a joystick. Head, head rest or foot rests. Um, I know we have a student that has to be kind of tilted. So, you know, we have to just accommodate each wheelchair. Attention all staff. We will be having a meeting at 225 in the auditorium. All staff, we will be having a meeting at 225 in the auditorium. Thank you. Can you still hear me? No, no, no. All right. Yeah, when the bell rings. Oh, wait. Okay. So for lift operation, keep in mind that all the buses have one of these. There's only one wheelchair bus that doesn't have this on the wall. Um, I ordered a bunch more, but this is going to be right above where the wheelchair, the lap belt, is hooked on. I think 119 might be the only one that doesn't have it. Yeah. So um, we'll go through it. Maybe it's 126, but I have five of these, so we'll make sure it's on there. But it describes where you need to hook it and how to hook it. So be sure to read the lift instructions that are on the wall. Find a safe loading area. Now. One day I took a picture of the buses and I caught 136 there. You can see down on the right hand side of the bus, there's the striped, you can see the crosswalk, but there's a striped area where the wheelchair is gonna fold out into. They wanted us to discuss how people could be tripping over the wheelchair lift as they're going into the school. We don't have that issue because of the way our parking lot's painted. Um, so I know years ago we used to load right onto the sidewalk so that would be a tripping hazard for people. I can order for you guys over the sidewalk, but next to ten other buses that load on the sidewalk. All wheelchairs? All wheelchairs. Yeah. We didn't, have, we didn't have other children. And there's a lot of buses that there's bus, a lot of buses that do have wheelchairs and some are just short buses that don't have them. And yeah. And there's a lot of times they have the kids have to walk all the way around on the grass. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, to be ready. So here they want us to be aware of that so that a monitor or the driver standing out there so that people aren't tripping. 
over it and breaking their leg. Um, what's that? It is a good looking boss. Nice and clean. Yeah. <laughs> That's his boss. <laughs> so the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration or Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards say that we should have a wheelchair with locks. Um, place the securement belts on the identified locations, welds or hooks of the wheelchair. So the four main parts of the wheelchair or in those welded hooks. Um, start with the front two points, so you're supposed to start with the front of the wheelchair and then hook the back second. Adjust the belt until it's snug. Um, belt should be straight, free from twisting, and unobs unobstructed to the degree possible. So the, the cue strains on the floor shouldn't be twisted, the ones that are coming up to the wheelchair. Um, never cross or overlap securement belts. Release the wheelchair wheel locks. So when you're locking them in, make sure the wheelchair locks are off. Hook everything down and when you have it, when the shake test is done, if it's tight, then lock. Yes. And when you grab to lock, you don't want to or shake the uh, wheelchair. You want to make sure you're holding the main part of the frame and not up on the, the armrest. Yeah. So that if it's loose, you can tighten it down and after you get it where you want it, then you're going to lock your wheelchair locks. So, I feel like I pushed the button too soon, but for student safety, make sure each step is followed properly. Um, lock the brakes we talked about, the safety strap. Um, when you're loading a wheelchair, you're always supposed to have your hand on the wheelchair as it's going up or coming down. Um, when you unfold the lip to the ground, make sure you back the wheelchair on, it never goes forward. Lock the brakes. Do all the wheelchair buses that we have now, do you, the, the, the parking brake, isn't there one that we used to have that we didn't have to set the parking brake? A while ago. 99. 90. I think 99 we had to. You, you drove 99 a lot, but did you drive it for a wheelchair? I don't think you did. I did. Um, I think most of them, that's a security feature. And there was a, um, a bus that I really drives the wheelchair and stuff, but it didn't even have the second parking. I mean, the actual parking brake should only have to be one part. Huh? Well, that's a new feature. 83, when I drove, when I drove 83, I don't know, I think it's what you're talking about. Okay. Just, I was just wondering if they all had to. Now they do. Yeah. Over the years, it's hard because years ago they did it one way, but they're getting, the security is getting better as we go. Holding the wheelchair, uh, raise and lift the wheelchair. We got that. So we only have, uh, we have the option of having multiple wheelchairs, but as far as I know, all of our wheelchair buses are only one. Um, face forward so that the students aren't getting sick. Um, know the sensitivity of the students, secure their chair with four points, place the three-point lap shoulder belt on correctly, perform your shake test, and then lock the wheelchair. So what's the attendance responsibility when you have a student in a wheelchair? Give me a quick, what's that? Oh. Someone, someone give me an idea of what is the attendance responsibility on the bus with someone with a wheelchair. You're driving down the road, what's, a, what's the attendant doing? Making sure it's not coming loose, attending to the student in the wheelchair. Should all the tie downs be used on every wheelchair? Or can you use three? No. Should the wheelchair brakes be locked, or can you just let them? And does everyone know what the shake test is? We kind of just went over that. What happens when these efforts and processes are in place? Well, let's let's see what happens. There's a monitor in the back seat. See her back there? See the monitor in the back?
Now, so look at, she's not, she's hooking seatbelts. Here's the student laying there and she's hooking seatbelts. So do you think this was a kid equipment failure? Did they use the tie downs? So it came loose during the ride. Where was the monitor? Sitting in the back playing on her phone. Did she have a shoulder strap on? Well, you can see it right there. No shoulder strap. Were the wheelchair locks on? That I think hers was an electric wheelchair. So I, when it gets turned off, it should lock. But on these, you physically have to lock them. Um, were they rushing? Why, why did they not put the student down? Why did the driver not see that? Exactly. You, you have the mirror. Did they perform a shake test during the route? No. Let me. <laughs> so we'll watch it real quick again. Now you can see the, the shoulder strap is hanging there. No locks on the wheelchair. No one's paying attention. Yeah, the, it looks like the monitor's even looking. And, and you can hear, if you listen when the bus driver gets up, she says something also. Oh look, she's bleeding, is what I heard the driver say. keep an eye on the student as they're driving, but the monitor should be doing random shake, chest, uh, shake tests on the wheelchair and being close, physically close. It doesn't look like there was one other student on the bus. Right. So why not sit right next to the student? And I don't understand why they didn't hook anything down. So now we're gonna talk about communication between the driver, the monitor, um, staff and student staff and parent, staff with the school, and then a team approach. So we need to know medical issues, comfort issues, and equipment issues. So like medical issues could be a seizure or an allergy. Um, Vicki and I had the student that had seizures. We were brought in on a meeting, so we knew. Now everyone that has an EpiPen knows who their student is, and what they're allergic to. I was, I was trained for um, adrenaline um, shot. Yeah. No, I mean, it because is. Oh. his heart stopped, his heart would stop. Um, if there was a um, disturbance. If you had an accident, you had like four minutes to get him with that shot. Mm -hmm. Same student as I have? Yeah. yeah, you had four minutes to get him that shot. Very similar to Stop the Bleed. We're the ones that are right there. We're gonna be, we have to be equipped with what we need to provide it for our we students. Were in the for it. Was that here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, he was going to post these, right? Because that's when I had him, it was when it was post these. But I had him here, I didn't have that. didn't have it. No, I had him at post these. Right, and when um, he was here, he didn't have it here. Right, but I'm saying when he was a senior here and a junior, he wasn't, in that state yet, because we didn't have to have it. When I drove him his last year of school, I didn't have it. When well, you were here, no, when you took him to Bosey, you had it. Well, it's, 
it's similar to the training. If anyone needs um, CPR, the monitor has to be trained to be on the bus with this student. Same thing, yeah. you know, heavy pen training. So, health questions. What if I find the wheelchair sturdy? How would you deal with that? What, who should I tell if the student's dirty? Uh, different safety questions you might have. What should I do if the wheelchair tire is flat or the batteries run down? What should I do if I can't get the child safety restraints secured properly? Um, how should I handle this type of equipment? These are things we need to know and think about ahead of time and it's all through communication. Student training strategies, um, training one skill at a time. So with a student, student on our bus, we might be able to go through five or six different things on what they need to know to cross the street. You might spend one week doing um, check before you step. The next week going 15 or 15 feet in front of the bus or 10 big steps. Uh, break it into small steps. Praise them for their accomplishments. Um, ask students re to repeat what you said back to them. Practice, patience, and then emphasize that they can do it, not they can't do it and be prepared to repeat it every day, and that's for every single student, not just special needs. So communication with parents, there's the FERPA, Family Education Rights and Privacy Act. It's for students and parents' privacy. Um, transportation is a supported service, so we must know, but it has to be confidential. You need to keep your supervisor in the loop on anything that you have a concern about. This slide here is for nonverbal students. Um, every action or behavior is a reaction to something. It communicates a message. So they're hitting, kicking, biting, and running away is the way that they're dealing with something. <clears throat> they have behavioral intervention plans, BIP. Um, they have a hard time expressing their feelings. You need to let the student know that you want to help them, but you don't know how. And then give suggestions on how to ask for something or show what they want. So it might even come down to like the Mrs. McDougal came over to our meeting that one time and said there are pictures, picture stories. You can hold a picture up. We can put pictures up on the ceiling of our bus. And if a kid's not sure how to communicate what they want, they can point to it. So there are some other things that we can do. And then remember that Mrs. McDougall said that if we have a student that's um, behaving well, we can offer, I think, ice cream cone. Yeah, coupons. yeah, coupons or certificates. It's a team approach with the administrators, which is usually the principal. As far as teachers, they have the most knowledge of our students. Our classroom assistants can offer guidance and insight because they might be having similar problems as us. You could always talk to a driver that had that student previously and discuss it, but that's something that you have to do confidentially and not in front of everyone. And then um, OTPT staff, they're basically occupational therapy, physical therapy, physically how to get a student in and out of the bus and help them. God bless you. So here's Eddie again. This is his last day of school. Um, please turn to page four of your handout after the video and we'll go through the review questions and then we'll go out and we'll do our um, wheelchair loading and unloading and ride. So here's Eddie on his last day. Okay, today's the big day, June 3rd. Yeah. <laughs> and Eddie just got done eating his breakfast to champions. Right? Right. So, what is today, Eddie? Why is today a special day? Yeah. <clears throat> today is my last day of school. Wow. That's nice. Dad, t um, yesterday was the, um, yesterday was the second. Do you know what's the date today? The third. Today is the third. Nice. Nice. So what are you gonna do today? I'm I'm gonna 
what am I going to do? Yeah. I am going to get out of my 276, 276 bus with Mr. Ken and Miss Joyce. Okay. Dad, can you... You got any big parties planned or anything? No, I, I don't have a party. Oh. Because I'm going to get a picture with Mr. Ken and Miss Joyce. Any big field trips or anything? I only have the final field trip. Okay. I am the final here. field trip? Is this like a test? No, it's not like a test. It's like the final you had the other day of job training? Yeah. Is this, a, is this a final field trip? Yeah, this is the final field trip. Okay. Can you... Can I get a... Where are you going? I am going to McDonald's. Okay, you gonna go to McDonald's? To McDonald's. McDonald's and get and get some chicken nuggets and fries. I am going to get and the uh, McFlurry. I am gonna get the M and M McFlurry. All right, Dad. Can I ask Mr. Ken and Miss Joyce? Can I? Get a picture with them, please. Sure, we'll ask them. And can you take the video of me on my sure. 276 bus? Okay, but for now, we gotta finish getting ready, alright? Okay. Alright, bye. Bye. Oh. Okay, Eddie's been waiting for the bus here. Yep. Real, 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 real excited. Real, 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 real excited. Okay. Okay. And here he goes. He's, he's getting on his 276 bus with Mr. Ken. And Miss Joyce. And Miss Joyce, right? <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. Let's do this. Today is the last day of school. Okay, here we go. My name is Green. How are you? Good. Last day. Mm -hmm. Today is my last day of school. Yes, it is. It is? Yeah. You don't need a ride next week? Alright, you want to get a picture, Eddie? Yeah. Alright, here, let's get a picture. Uh, Mr. Ken, will you slide it here next to me? Sure. Here, hold on. I'm going to see I found something in the seat. Where are you? I found something in the Oh I can't find anything. I didn't oh, find anything. <laughs> Where are you going today, McDonald's? Right. Yeah. Yeah. What you gonna have? And I'm in the flurry. Oh no Angie today, huh? Well, she's great. Yeah, she's graduating. Oh, she has okay. a job. Yeah, can you take a video? I got a video, alright? Alright. All right, you have a good day at school, and I'll see you later. Bye. Okay. Bye. 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 McFlurry and getting his picture taken. <laughs> Why was the bus ride so important to him? And because of all the people that took care of him, all his friends. He's so happy. It makes me so happy. <laughs> so we're going to just do some review, and then we'll go head out to the bus. Placing the student's name above their assigned seat can help reduce anxiety for some students with special needs when boarding the bus. List two strategies for unloading students with special needs. This is where you have to fill in the blanks in your sheet. Anyone have an idea? Unloading? One, one simple step at a time. You can physically help them up plus steps. Having them drag their heels to be aware. 
verbal cues. So we don't allow them to unload without assistance. <coughs> if we don't verbally warn them of consequences of not getting off the bus as directed, we would try to use a stuffed animal or something to lure them off the bus. We're not going to give them consequences or yell at them. Has everyone got it? <coughs> what are three boarding strategies an attendant or monitor can use? <coughs> the answers. They might be in a different order in your packet, but students should be the first or last one in line. With impulsive behaviors, use hands-on supervision so they don't dart out into traffic and allow them to carry a stuffed animal or something that comforts them. What are three important facts about the securement of a wheelchair? Facing forward so they don't get nauseous. Four points of securement. Three point shoulder lap belt. Shake test. And then the brakes. Yes. The next page. And then this, the last page, well, second to last page is your special needs quiz. Drivers, monitors, and attendants are legally responsible for the care and custody of the children they transport. When transporting a student in a wheelchair, it is important that the driver, attendant, and monitor know the child's name and medical needs, style of chair, and its special equipment on the chair, special securement equipment, all of the above. When you load a student with special needs first or last in line, the consistency helps reduce the student's anxiety and minimizes the confusion. Okay. When we prompt our students before we arrive to school or a bus stop, we are doing what? Yeah. One strategy when you're unloading is to scream clear, simple directions to the students. <laughs> they think we're screaming, but we're really just talking. <laughs> and then, if anyone ever needs a duplicate, it's not not screaming. <laughs> if anyone ever needs a duplicate certificate of any of their courses, they're free through PTSI. You just have to fill out the form and call. And there is a an evaluation. As soon as we're done, we're going to head out to the buses and we're going to go for a ride. We're going to see wheelchair securement, how to load and unload, and then we're going to take a nice ride. All right, and I suggest if you have to use the restroom, do it before we go. He said 20 after. Who has the sign-up sheet? There it is. Oh, we have a question, guys. And they can, the driver or the monitor or Bill can tell you before you get on that bus. Right, so there's an emergency where they, they have to call in that, that yeah, morning. They call they call the they won't call the sick that morning. I used to so know. before the driver gets on the bus, they can go to Bill and say, Bill, what do I need to know about this student but that I'm driving? Bill is out and you're on your run, I used to have a confidential packet on my bus. It was like vanilla envelope with the special instructions. 
and it says confidential. So, and you leave it right on your bus, which, because no one goes on your bus other than you, the kids, and it stays with your paperwork, so the kids won't have access to it, but it... <clears throat> in the subfolder? Like in a subfolder? So I'll, I'll send Jen Hall an email and ask if that's something that we can keep on the bus. Because what if we go on a field trip and someone gets in the bus and takes it? Is it is it secured? Or even that bus on trip. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it would have to be in a subfolder. Yeah. I was going to say, put it in a subfolder. If you leave it on the bus, it's a, if you're putting a confidential document in yeah. open space and public space. Yeah, I think when I had that, we didn't have subfolders. We only had the actual volume that was on the bus. So I would say anyone that has a special needs student, they make a little packet like Kathy had and put it in the subfolder, but it's only discussed between the driver, the monitor, and a sub. Or the driver, the monitor, and a mechanic. So every time that subfolder has to be put back. It's oh, definitely. Every, every, everyone should. Yep. So it's sometimes you know, yeah. Terry? to the nurse about the EpiPen training, I told her that I have, um, Chris handed me a couple years ago, a manila folder that said confidential on it. Yeah. And I said, it's stored in my office, locked. She said, that's good. She didn't want everyone to be taking it. But they could be, all of your stuff could be locked in my office. Well, no, Bill can get into everything. We want to do what the school wants. But having everyone put in a comment, that's good because we can think of everything. You know, someone might have a better idea. Is a sub. Yeah. So we just need to run it by Jen Hall to make sure that it's legal. Number five on your 